So this is a power analyzer made by Meecher. It doesn't have a model number on it. Anyways, I said in a video before when I was taking apart the kilowatt that there were features that I was looking for in an inexpensive power analyzer that the, the kilowatt didn't have. Namely, it didn't have a backlight. It didn't have a way for it to actually remember the accumulated measurements once power was cut from it, especially important when you're doing like battery life or battery capacity testing and efficiency testing on AC inverters, DC to AC inverters, things like that. That's what I was looking for primarily. This also has a couple of other cool functions where you can set your cost per kilowatt hour and then get an actual cost computation from the device based on what your cost per kilowatt hour is. It does also have a high and low function on it, which is neat because it'll store the highest wattage that it's seen and the lowest wattage that it's seen. I'm not going into a full review of this. This is really more of a teardown. These things are really inexpensive. Right now it's $12.88 on Amazon with a 10% coupon. So, you know, really I'm looking just to see for what I've bought, is it frankly not going to burn my house down? There are not any third-party testing certifications on here for safety like the kilowatt has. It doesn't guarantee anything, but at least it shows that it's been through testing through some sort of independent laboratory to determine whether or not the design complies with whatever particular standard. 61010-1, which is the standard for lab test equipment. I thought my pro kit actually had all the bits that I needed for opening this up, but apparently it did not. So here, got a little kit that has the bits that I need with a little driver. So I'll need the two and a half millimeter bit. So it's just three of these tri-wing screws. I just got a little gripper thing here so I can get a little bit more grip. There we go. Um, these are really in there. Which makes sense because there's only the three screws holding these together or they were over torqued because I hear plastic making kind of a crunchy sound when I release those screws. These are definitely self-tapper screws. And let's get it opened up. So I'm just going to pull on this. It seems like it wants to separate, but toward the top, Oh, you know what? I bet you there's another screw back here. Is there one? I don't feel anything back there that would... There we go. Just opens up. Ooh, this is way simpler <laughs> than the kilowatt. Doesn't mean that it's bad, but what we have here, there's, there's no printed circuit board for the actual prongs themselves. They're separate and then molded into a plastic assembly, which is kind of nice that everything is screwed down, like the line and neutral terminals are screwed into this whole block. It's actually better than the kilowatt, and the ground goes right through to where you plug in the ground lug. This really seems like it's better built as far as the plug is concerned, because these terminals are actually in the plastic enclosure. And unless the plastic really deforms, even if it does, you won't be able to get the plug in. And on the out, see, this is where they've actually have a more compliant design, even though if it hasn't been specifically tested, the leads going out aren't soldered at all. They have a crimped, wire connection to an eyelet that is screwed down and then each lead at each plug tip comes in and is screwed into that post. So even if this were to come loose, this post can't come out. It'll, it'll go loose, but it can't come out. So it's not relying on soldering at all, which is nice. The bummer is there's no thermal protection unless there is, and I just don't see it. No, there is no specific thermal fuse. The copper strip coming in and then out to both of the plug terminals. And then the line side is bypassed and goes from here into the circuit board through the shunt back out 
to the output. That's kind of one big drawback here. It wouldn't be difficult to put one in here, but they're really relying on the plastic. This is probably glass fiber reinforced plastic. So it's really highly rated, fire rated plastic to keep all this from, even in a moderate overload situation, it won't actually melt to the point that it starts a fire. But it's up to you to make sure you don't overload it, basically. If you put it in a 20 amp branch or something even higher and it's not rated for that, which its rating is 1800 watts. Well, it says its wattage display is 1800 watts. Operating current max 15 amps. So you could overload it and then it's not gonna shut itself off. Oop, I need to change bits. <laughs> the rest of these are Phillips. Nothing's gonna cut out the supply if it is overloaded. So it's relying on the circuit breaker and your branch protection for both overload and short circuit protection. The thermal fuse doesn't provide short circuit protection either. Well, it, it does, but kind of in an indirect way, but it's up to you to make sure that you don't put it into a socket that is above the rating of this. So there's a lot going on here. We are bridged out. Okay, cool. It looks like all of the intelligence is really on here. The display control might just be on the front of this. All the control of like what's going on is done here. Because I can see the, uh, the control lines. There are five leads going out instead of six like we saw on the kilowatt. And it has a VCC because it's got its drop cap supply that uses to create a little local logic level for supply. And that's here. And that looks like it's got two grounds and then RX and TX. So I'm wondering if it's using a UART to communicate to this board to just display whatever needs to go on there. And I'm wondering if this is like some kind of power analyzer chip. That's my guess. Especially with the cost as being as low as this thing is that you'd want everything to be as specific as possible and that you weren't designing anything for a special purpose. We've got a part number. Well, we do get something. We have a bad gateway, but I can see in the site description that the V9240 is this thing right here is a multifunction ultra low power single phase power measurement IC with UART serial interface. I'll see if I can try to get this link to work, but it doesn't seem to be working right now. But yes, we have a discrete, a single phase power measurement IC right on board. And then that is shuttling off what it measures off to a serial connection to this other board. I should also mention that all the power supply and regulation is done on this side of the board. It, it's just passing over the regulated supply and then your UART to this other board. This looks a little bit <laughs> cheesy. There's just two pins sticking out. I'm assuming these go to a beeper or it's for the backlight. Be careful here because I'd rather not have to resolder those. And they are different screw sizes. Okay, interesting. I guess it's just whatever they had. They're making this. It definitely seems like they copied kilowatt just by virtue of how this is laid out. I mean, it's not that much of a surprise, but then just costed it down, removed an expensive thermal fuse. There's no actual, even an inline fuse for the supply that the kilowatt has. If the capacitive dropper supply fails for whatever reason, it's gonna short across the input, which Given that it's lab test equipment under that IEC 61010-1, there might be some leniency for that. Okay, removed the front cover, and now we have this giant display. It's much bigger, obviously, than what's on the kilowatt. The backlight is slid in here. Let's get the buttons off for us, actually. The button silk screens actually match the buttons. Mode, set, up, down, and reset. Real thick silicone, so you're you're well isolated from the voltage reduced, but still mains the voltage. And this doesn't want to pull out. It stops right here for some reason. Oh, it's because it's soldered in. It's soldered in on this side, so I can't pull it out. It won't go past there, but it's just floating around in there. I'm going to remove the display now. It's going to pop off the zebra strips. Or they may stay in place. I don't know. Oh, it's all in a frame. This is nice because whoa, this is actually how the two zebra strips kind of stayed in place. So I can just take that and gently slide it back in here. We have a frame that lays in here. Nope, it did, and now it doesn't want to. And then the backlight sits on top of this 
and it illuminates the LCD coming into the board here. RX and TX are up here, and they go underneath this chip and go where? Now that must be VCC. Did I get this in the wrong order? Or are these just not labeled correctly? Because that looks like it's a supply. But we have one, I think this is some sort of a converter, like a level shifter sort of thing, and then it's providing whatever translation is needed between the power analyzer I see and this LCD display controller. It's strange that it's actually a bit more complex than the kilowatt, because the kilowatt just used a blob chip for the whole thing with some FRAM and discrete converter. But I do feel like the discrete IC might actually be more accurate than what's in the kilowatt. But I think for $12, as long as you're careful with what, how you're using this, it doesn't have the protections on it that are going to safely shut it down should you plug it into a 20 amp branch and overload it. They claim that it's rated to 15 amps max, but where it counts, if you're just using this within its ratings, the way that they have designed the plug, which to me is the most concerning part of this whole thing, as you keep unplugging and plugging in devices to test into it, this design I, I prefer over what was in the kilowatt. But overall protection, the kilowatt obviously is superior, but that's because it, this would not comply with the 60101-1 standard because there's no overload protection for one. And second of all, if you were to shard the local supply, it would pop the branch circuit breaker, which is generally not accepted. Seems like it's technically good for measurements, but also somewhat repairable. It's a good piece of test equipment. You just have to be aware of its limitations and the range in which it can be used in and don't exceed that or else it might get really unhappy and melt. Well, that is the Meacher Power Analyzer. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.